Well, welcome, Faith family. And for any of you who are visiting us for the first time online, glad that you are joining us for worship. We are excited that you are joining us wherever you find yourself. Uh, we are excited to be singing together, diving into God's word together. Uh, but before we do that, before we dive into singing with one another, we like to start our services both in on, online and in person uh, by, by reciting and, and confessing our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. This is one of those things that uh, unites us as a church. Regardless of all the things that divide us in this world, we can come together as Christians standing firm on these words, the promise of who Jesus is. So let's start our service together, confessing our faith using these words. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together, not afraid. I have this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God still inside the storm, the promise of the shore. I trust the power of the To seek your kingdom first Beyond the barren place Beyond the ocean waves When I walk through the waters I won't be overcome When I go through the rivers I will not be drowned My God will make a way So I am not afraid promises you make There isn't one that is delayed So I will not lose heart Here I will lift my arms 
God will make a way, so I am not afraid. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid. Father, thank you. Thank you that we can call you our mighty fortress, that you are the rock that we can stand firm on even when the world is unsettled, even when the sand beneath our feet falls away, you are there and you are there to stand firm for us. 
And God, we will never be able to thank you or give you enough praise for that. But as we worship you, as we dive into your word, as you speak through Pastor Dan and the words you've laid on his heart, I just pray that we would recognize you, that we would see your spirit moving in us, that you would remind us of your goodness, you would remind us of your strength, and that you are always present with us. Because God, so often we forget. And I know that's on us, Father, but we know that sometimes the nudge of your spirit is all it takes for us to be reminded of the security and safety, the mercy and grace that we get to rest in because of you. So Father, we give you this space, this time, as we uh, dive into your word, it is your, it's your move. You get to have your way in us. So we offer this to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Welcome, faith family and friends, as we celebrate All Saints this weekend. The older I get, the more I appreciate All Saints weekend, because the older I get, the more that I know beloved friends and family members who are a part of the saints above. And so this is a weekend in which we're invited to look up, to look up and to give thanks for those moms and dads and brothers and sisters and friends and aunts and uncles and neighbors who are now a part of the chorus of saints above. As we begin All Saints Sunday, we probably ought to ask the question, what is a saint? And how would we explain what a saint is to a child? The Bible, of course, has a lot to teach us about saints. And I think that the more we look at our lessons this weekend, the more we're going to see that the way that we would maybe define a saint is different, dramatically different than how the Bible would defy a saint. So let's begin with our, with our uh, psalm for this weekend, and that's Psalm 34. If you'd open up your Bibles to, to Psalm 34. This is a familiar psalm. You'll find it on page 786 in our Quest Bibles. And I'd like to pick it up with verse 4, which, or verse 9, rather, which says this. It says, right in the middle of the page, Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. In other words, saints are those who fear the Lord. And the good news is if we fear God or we fear the Lord, we have nothing to fear. I, I heard someone on Twitter this week, believe it or not, say lament that it would seem that too many people today seem to have lost any, any kind of sense of fear of God. Well, what do you think about that? Think people, people fear the Lord today? Now let's bear in mind that fear is often a good thing in life. We think of fear as something bad, but what we want as parents for our kids to fear dangerous things and to fear dangerous people so that they might be careful. And similarly in Scripture, we're invited to, to, to fear the Lord, and fear in Scripture is in the healthy sense of awe and reverence before the Lord. In families, we may... Um, we may have a sense of healthy fear. I mean, kids might say to their, to their buddies that my parents would kill me if I did that. And of course, they don't mean that literally. But what they, what they are saying is, my parents care about how I behave. You know, pity the kid who, who says, my parents wouldn't, my, my folks wouldn't care if I did, if I did that bad thing. So to, to say that we, our parents would kill us is a way of saying my parents care. And similarly, we, we might even say as adults, we might say my spouse would kill me if I did that. And again, we're saying, we don't mean that literally, but we're saying that our spouse cares. So scripture, scripture also describes healthy fear in terms of, of awe and wonder and reverence before God. I've often thought it's interesting that whenever the Lord appears in scripture or an angel appears before scripture... What is, the, what is the reaction of the biblical character? Almost always, it's fear. Fear and awe and wonder. And in that sense, Isaiah, with the call of Isaiah, when the Lord appears to him, he says, Woe is me, for I am a man of unclean lips. I think if, if the Lord were to suddenly appear to us today, or a chorus of angels were to suddenly appear to us today, we, we would probably fall to our knees. That would be our immediate reaction. Fall to our knees, if not fall to our faces in fear and awe and wonder and reverence. 
And so scripture calls us to fear the Lord. The saints are those who fear the Lord. And if we fear the Lord or we fear God, we have nothing to fear. On Reformation Sunday, which we just celebrated last weekend, and the pyramids behind me are still red from Reformation. They'll be white this weekend for all saints as we, as we are reminded of how we inherit the white robes of righteousness through, through the grace of God. But on Reformation Sunday, we often sing the popular Reformation hymn by Martin Luther, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Now, my, my dad, of course, was one of my confirmation teachers, and he, he was a tough teacher, and he had us memorize all kinds of things, not only the small catechism and Luther's meaning, but also all kinds of hymns and all the verses of all kinds of hymns. And of course, we had to memorize all four verses of A Mighty Fortress. I don't know how many of you others had to do that as well. Well, but at the time, while I thought it was a little unfair and hard and heavy, nevertheless, I appreciate it today because I still remember so many of those words. For example, from verse 3 of a mighty fortress, and though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph o'er us, the prince of darkness grim. We tremble not for him, his, his rage, his his rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. So quick quiz for you. What do you suppose that one little word is that would fell the devil, so to speak? Do you suppose, you suppose that one word would be Jesus? That would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? We, we believe that there's power in the name of Jesus, remarkable power in the name of Jesus. But, but it wouldn't make sense for Luther to think of Jesus as a little word. He would think of Jesus as a big word, a powerful word. How about the word of God? Would that be the little word that, that would fell the devil? Well, that doesn't quite make sense either. We believe there's great power in the word, tremendous power in the word. But again, for Luther, the, God's word is no little word. It's a it's a big word, a huge word. Well, Luther later explains what he meant with that line in that hymn as he points to the Gospel of John, the eighth chapter in verse 44, where Jesus refers to the devil as the father of lies. That's what the devil does. The devil lies. The devil lies about who God is, lies about his love, cast doubt that God loves us, cast doubt on his forgiveness and grace, cast doubt on our worth, cast doubt that God really cares about us, cast doubt that God has great plans for our life. All lies, lies, lies. And so the little word that would fell him is to proclaim him a liar. I think when we hear all the little voices in our head, from day to day, all the little voices of fear and doubt and anxiety. Maybe it's helpful for us to, to call them out and say, liar, lies, lies, lies. And so in, in scripture, we are invited to fear the Lord. And the good news is when we fear God, we have nothing else to fear. Scripture invites us to, to, to fear and love the Lord, to, to fear and trust the Lord. And I've often said that, isn't it, isn't it interesting, isn't it noteworthy that, that Jesus never says, have the faith of a grown-up, but rather that Jesus says, have the faith of a little child, which is an invitation to simply rest in the sovereignty of God, trusting that God's got us at all time. So notice how David in this psalm here invites us to trust the Lord so, so that we might move from, from fear to faith. If we were to pick it up in verse 4, David says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Wow. In verse 5, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who... Fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And that's why we're going to sing a mighty fortress here again today because the Reformation continues and it comes right out of this psalm. Verse 9, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Yes, the good news is that saints are those who fear the Lord in that healthy sense of fear and respect. And the good news is if we fear the Lord, if we fear God, we have nothing else to fear. 
We learn secondly about the saints in our gospel lesson for today. That's Matthew 5. That's the traditional all saints gospel every year. Actually in the lectionary is Matthew 5, which, which most of us know as the Beatitudes. And, and let's pick it up with verse 11, or verse 3, sorry. In verse 3 where Jesus says this. You'll find this on page 1389 if you're following along in the Quest Bible. He says in verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And it seems to me that the second takeaway for today is this, that the saints are those who know their need. Let's face it, the Beatitudes probably seem very counterintuitive to Jesus' first listeners too, probably very shocking to Jesus' first listeners. If I were to ask you, who seems to be the most blessed in our world? We might be inclined to say, well, blessed are the rich. Blessed are the famous. Blessed are those who live in nice neighborhoods and drive nice cars. Blessed are the star students. Blessed are the star athletes. That's probably who seems the most blessed in our world. And probably who seemed to be the most blessed in Jesus' day. Well, probably the rich in Jesus' day, seemed to be the most blessed. Those that have the nicest houses and nicest clothes and possessions. Perhaps the Pharisees seemed to be the most blessed. Perhaps those in power, the Romans, seemed to be the most blessed. But you know what? I, I, think, I have a hunch Jesus was preaching to a crowd that felt pretty beat down. A lot of us have been to the Holy Land several times. We've been to the Mount of Beatitudes by the, by the, the shores of, of the Sea of Galilee. And we can just imagine that this crowd, many of them the poorest of the poor, probably hungry, hungry for a word of hope, hungry to know that they're, they're loved, hungry to know that God cared. But Jesus might very well have been saying, blessed are you who are depressed. Blessed are you who are anxious. Blessed are you who are laying awake at night worrying about various things. But in what sense could discouragement and anxiety be blessings? Perhaps this leads us to another definition of who the saints are. The saints are those who know their need for God. That's who's blessed. Blessed are those who know their need for God. And so one of the songs that we're going to sing today, the song right after this message is, Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. And it goes on to say, where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. That's the path to sainthood, is holiness is Christ in me. Sainthood is Christ in me. I had, I had a funeral about five years ago for a 41-year-old who had suffered a lifetime of, of debilitating health issues. And in the last five years of his life, he, he, he battled chronic pain. Doesn't it seem like some people just don't get a break. I was visiting someone in, in, in a nursing home earlier this year and, and cancer had eaten away at his face and, 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 and left some rather gr grotesque holes in his, in his face. So much so that I, you know, I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but it was, it was, it was kind of hard to look at him. And, I, and I'm reminded of the lepers in Jesus' day. It was probably a little hard to look at them sometimes too as, as their disease had eaten away at their flesh. But those kind of people cause us to sometimes wonder, where, where is God? Where is God in all that? So a, a, a long, perhaps what Jesus is saying here is, hang in there, my friend. Hang in there, my friend, in the midst of your suffering, for your story isn't over with yet. I'm reminded of how the Apostle Paul says, no present suffering can compare to the glory that is to be revealed. So Jesus in the Beatitudes seems to be saying, blessed are those who know their need for God, for they shall see God, for their story is not yet over. 
Bear in mind one of Jesus' major preaching and teaching themes is the great reversal, what we call the great reversal, where Jesus says over and over again, and it's, it's, it's kind of a warning, but it's also good news, depending on where we, we are in life, that the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And someday the humble shall be exalted, and the exalted shall be humbled. So I think the takeaway regarding saints on this All Saints weekend from the Beatitudes is that the saints are those who know their need for God, for they shall see God. Well, last but not least, the Apostle Paul talks about saints as well. And so let's close by turning to, to Romans chapter 1, where Paul refers at the very beginning of this letter to the saints in, in two different places. Let's pick it up with verse 7, where in verse 7, and again we're on page 1610 in our Quest Bibles. In verse 7, Paul says to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. Isn't, isn't that remarkable? Thanks be to God. It's amazing grace. We receive sainthood. So maybe, maybe we kind of missed the mark a little bit with the passing of the peace today. Maybe what we should have said is please greet the saints around you. So maybe we could say this morning, welcome Saint Scott, welcome Saint Andrew. How was your, how was your week, Saint Lucas? That's a little hard to say, isn't it? Saint Lucas. But of course, it's thanks to grace that God sees us as saints. Now, I think most of us would recoil at be call, in, in being called a saint. And we would, most of us would protest and say, I'm, I'm no saint. And of course, by our works, none of us are saints. We all fall short. But of course, dealing with his, with his beautiful, with his, with his powerful sermon last week on Romans 3 reminded us that, that by our good works, and in our obedience, we will always fall short. But he reminded us of the good news from Paul in Romans 3, 24, that we are justified, how? Freely by his grace. Through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So in other words, just as we are redeemed by grace, so too are we made righteous by grace, so too are we forgiven by grace, and so too are we made holy by grace, so too are we considered saints by grace as God loves us through his amazing grace. We, we sometimes sing, oh, when the saints go marching in on All Saints Sunday. It's, it's a joyful song, actually. And I think we know that when we sing, oh, when the saints go marching in, we, we know that it's by grace that the saints go marching in. We, I've had 10 funerals this last year. And, and, and as much as we, we, we loved and miss those brothers and sisters in Christ, we, we know they weren't perfect. N none of us are perfect. We all fall short of the grace and, and, and glory of God. But you know what? They were loved. And so they are dearly missed. They were loved by us. But more importantly, they were loved and are loved by God. God who wrote their names in the book of life through holy baptism. The older I get, the more I am comforted and encouraged by the promises of holy baptism. The promises of holy baptism where we say, child of God, you are sealed, sealed by the Holy Spirit. Think of the security of that, the assurance of that. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And the good news is forever means forever. What a promise. What good news. On this All Saints Sunday, as we celebrate the saints above, we also celebrate that thanks to God's amazing grace, we receive the miracle of the, of the revered status of sainthood. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do give thanks for all the saints who from their journeys rest. And so we do today look up and give thanks for all the moms and the dads and the brothers and the sisters and the aunts and the uncles, the friends and the neighbors who, who, who are now with you, who are now with you, who are a part of the saints above. And we are reminded today of how it is that we become saints. It's only by 
your amazing grace. So help, help us, Lord, to, with the psalmist, to, to fear you in the best sense of fear, in awe and reverence. And uh, as we bow before you, we, we pray that we give thanks for the good news that when we fear you, we, we have nothing else to fear. And Lord, as we think of the Beatitudes today, we're reminded that uh, the saints are those who, who know their need for you. And as Dylan and Lucas both said the last couple of weeks, um, echoing Martin Luther himself when he died, we are all beggars before the throne of God. And so we, we, we know we need you, God, and we give thanks that your, your grace runs deep. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue by praying for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we give thanks today for your presence and your love and your grace. And we just come before you humbled by all that you have offered us. And so we want to offer back to you today all that you have first given us, ourselves, our time, our things. And we just ask today that you would receive them and use them to further your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we confess to you too that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we've done and by what we've left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. So hear us now as we confess to you from the silence of our hearts, our sin and our brokenness.
God, we give thanks for your forgiveness and that you remove our sins as far as the east is from the west uh, and that you just continue to pour out your grace on us uh, and, and allow us to stand before you as your redeemed, chosen, forgiven children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think today too, Lord, of all of those who are sick and suffering, for those that are grieving, for those that are heavy hearted, and we ask that you would lay your hands on them and bring healing to them today, offer them your comfort, um, remind them of your presence as we name them before you now. We give thanks that you are the great physician and our healer, and so we place all of these people into your hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare for communion, we'd invite you to gather whatever elements you are using at home, something for bread and something for wine or juice or whatever it is that you have at home. And let's remember that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He, bro he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. So we'd invite you now to take and eat. This is Jesus' body given for you. Later that night, as they were sharing supper, he took the cup and he again gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also to remember me. So we'd invite you now to take and drink. This is the blood of Jesus. Let's pray using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mine and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in all King of glory, the King of all. 
of all genes. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down. done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The king of glory The king of all kings Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of Glory, the King above all kings. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you. for me Worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king conquered the grave Worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the king who conquers the grave Worthy is the lamb who for joining us today for worship. It's great to be able to gather online and we're thankful for you uh, joining in and just being able to, again, focus our hearts and our minds on, on God and, and how he's moving and, and working in us and through us and just to be ready to step in today and into these coming days, uh, ready to, to continue to love and serve him. So uh, before we go today, just want to remind you, uh, save the date is that we have Gingerbread Bash coming up on December 1st and that's for all people to join in with We'd love to have you. Uh, there's crafts. I think we're making a nativity gingerbread uh, set and um, we'll have games and singing and all sorts of fun stuff. So we'd love to have you join us if you're in the area and can come and join us for that night. That's a lot of fun. And then there continues to be uh, Bible studies and small groups uh, and those things happening. And so we just encourage you to continue uh, checking on Facebook or Instagram or on our website to see what is happening because we'd love you, for you to be a part of that as well. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. As you go today, go in peace and serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God.